What's up guys, it's Other Jesus. Time for another entry into the Diary of a Matchmaking Noob. Haven't got to do one in the past few days, been super busy. Haven't even got to play much Battlefield in the past few days. Did get to play some last night, but I wasn't able to capture anything, and it's a real shame because I was working to unlock some weapons that I didn't have, and it would have been great to show you guys some of me just totally sacrificing myself trying to unlock some of these weapons. Uh, it was a lot of fun, though. We actually had some pretty fun games. But today, I've got a game of Rush on No Shark Canals. I chose this game because I had never played Rush on no Shar before. Of course I've done a ton of uh, TDM on no Shar and some games of Conquest as well, but have never done a game of Rush and I haven't even watched this game back yet. Um, so I thought it would be cool. I know I didn't do too amazing on this game. As you see I spawned on top of a roof there. I, I didn't know where the hell I was and I jumped down and there were some enemies waiting for me. And so I decided to switch over to the MK11, which I'd seen some other people using and thought it was a pretty cool gun. Um, I'm sorry, the M417, excuse me. And I thought I would try to help my team with spawn beacons to uh, so we could arm these MCOMs. So here we go. So I switched over to the sniper. Uh, with iron sights, and uh, I chose the spawn beacon, and I parachute in, and again, I've got no I, no idea where the MCOMs are on this map, and I think we are attacking right now, so we're trying to arm these MCOMs here, and these guys that we were playing against, if I remember correctly, they were pretty dang good, they, they, were, they were pretty sneaky as well, and they were... If I remember correctly, they were putting C4 on the MCOMs, making it uh, pretty difficult for us to arm them. And I'm rocking iron sights with this semi-auto sniper. And I like these se uh, semi-auto snipers because they're pretty similar to battle rifles. They pretty much just feel like a battle rifle from Halo. And they got some pretty good stopping power, at least I feel like they do. I feel like I can take out enemies pretty good with, with them. So it looks like I had thought maybe about flying a chopper there, but then thought better of it. I'm trying to get better at flying the choppers, but not very good yet. I was experimenting with some different control setups on flying the chopper. I had been using... Oh man, I thought I almost had that guy right there. What? Let's see, what did he have left? 37% health? He had a shotgun, so whatever. No big deal there. But I've been using the alternative setup for flying the chopper, and I feel like I had pretty good, pretty good control over the chopper, but um, going up and down, I don't know what, what you call it, but uh, the... Like, like actually taking off and then landing the chopper, uh, like the, 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 the vertical height. Like if I wanted to fly up higher, if I wanted to fly up lower, I felt like the alternative setup was kind of difficult to, to do that. So I'm going to go back to, to default. But it looks like we armed the first two, so I'm pushing up a little bit here. And I'm just trying to kind of stay back a little bit and just kind of kill guys and hopefully try to find some some more places to set down the spawn beacons and you see right there I stupidly tried to chase that guy down and knife him and take his tags and then I missed that first knife and so I just thought better of it and I was like you know what I'm just gonna stop and, and shoot this guy because I'm trying to win this game. I'm not just trying to take this guy's tags. It's more important for me just to try and kill these guys. Really sloppy right there. Thankfully, I got really lucky that that guy didn't turn around and and kill me. Got really lucky again that the guy going into the building here didn't see me. And I took a moment to go prone there and, and reload. 
and it really paid off for me. Because I think that extra moment that I took to stay prone and reload there before I went into the building looking for that guy, the enemy had to take like that extra second and like and and you know anticipate me a, a little bit more. And right here though, ooh, I actually remember that I got sandwiched right there. I should have stayed in the building and just kind of waited for them to uh, come in there. Probably still would have died because there was two of them, but you never know. Could have got them both, and that's really what it boils down to, you know, is just decision making. A lot of these first-person shooter games. Well, I, I, I've only played, you know, I only play a few. You know, I played Halo for a long time, like I've like I've told you guys, and. You know, I play a little bit of Call of Duty. I've beta tested some Call of Duty games, and uh, a good friend of mine did give me a copy of Modern Warfare 3 for Christmas last year. So I did, or not last year, but the year before. I don't even know. Time flies. There's like a Call of Duty, new Call of Duty game every month, it seems like. But I did play a bit of Modern Warfare 3. Um, Modern Warfare 3 is so fast-paced. I don't really... Uh, compare it at all to to Battlefield or uh, previous Halo games besides Halo 4 which kind of seemed to want to try to be Call of Duty in a way but anyway I'm, I'm not here to pick you know those games apart or anything like that but um, the point is a, a lot of these games really boil down to decision-making I mean you can have some you know you can have amazing aim and still make stupid decisions and you're gonna get killed every time you can you can have the best aim in the world and run into a room with five enemies and you might kill one of them you might kill two of them but if there's five enemies in there and you weren't expecting them to be there and you weren't prepared for it, if you didn't make a, a smart decision to maybe nade that room a couple times first or alert your friends first or, or your teammates rather you're likely going to die. You know, you might get one lucky kill. You might even be at the top of the leaderboard at, at, at the end of the game, but your team st might, you know, still might lose the game. So it really boils down to making the best decisions. And sometimes those decisions, especially in Battlefield, when you're playing a squad-based game like this where your squad can spawn on you, and especially in this rush game type, I find... You need to you need to stay alive. If you're the last one alive in your squad, and your squad has to spawn back at the deployment, and you're spending two minutes running to the objective while the enemy team gets to reorganize and get set up and anticipate you, well, you're just making things harder for your team. So that's one of my favorite things about Battlefield is it's not just about having the most kills and being at the top of the leaderboard you really got to try to make good decisions and right there that Tony Montana guy got me but I thought it was a teammate so I didn't fire at him right away and I do that often in this game and something that you'll see in some of my next videos I recently switched my visual settings to the colorblind settings and it really makes things just pop out a little bit more. Um, I'm not sure that I really appreciate the way the colors look that much, but it really does make things kind of pop out a little bit. Makes the makes the enemies a little bit easier to to distinguish good guys from bad guys, in my opinion. Um, but the thing that really I, I thought was great was that on the mini map I could I could I felt like I could more quickly look at the mini map and and, and see the enemies and right there that that was just kind of sloppy right there um, I'm sloppy on both of our parts actually that guy with the M60E I really felt like he had the edge on me because I came around the corner and I missed my first you know, three or four shots there. I was kind of disoriented. And I think, you know, watching this back now, it looks like the guy with that with that uh, M60, he looked like he was pretty surprised to find me right there too. 
So there, I parachuted in, and I tried to kind of come around from the back, and just trying to stay alive, but nope, see right there, C4 explosives. So, what are you going to do? But now I see where the that uh, where that guy is, so I got a kind of better idea from watching his spawn, where he is and what's going on, so when I spawn back into the game, I kind of know where to anticipate him. That's one thing I, that I like about the hardcore mode in, in Battlefield 3, is that uh, you can turn off the spawn camera. Oh, look at that noob, noob move right there. I tried to spot that guy for my team, and I hit the guide button. So, if you haven't watched my Battlefield 4 wish list, wish list, wish list, wish list video, uh, do check that out. I got some pretty good suggestions in there, and that is one of them. As I put uh, 17 bullets into that equipment there before I actually hit it, and it almost cost me my life. Thankfully, one of my bros revs me right there. So so far I'm doing pretty good. I'm you know I'm getting some some getting some kills. Just trying to help my squad a little bit. Um, not doing anything anything super amazing. Just trying to stay alive. Trying to not really rush right into unknown territory again because I haven't played rush on this map before. So this is all really new to me. I'm not I'm not sure where I should be expecting the enemy. I'm not even sure where I'm where I'm going frankly. So I'm just trying to take a little bit slow here and spot a couple enemies. Almost get killed there. I shouldn't say almost. I am dead right here actually because if you notice I have zero health. So I'm just kind of trying just to hide right here waiting for my health to respawn because I know there are some guys out here and sure enough they, they, they were coming in on me. They weren't going to let me just, just hide there. Is that RPK-74M any good? I'm going to have to try that gun out a little bit. I unlocked the SCAR-L last night, which I had been wanting to unlock for a while, and as I said earlier in this video, I really wished I could have captured some of that video, because it was pretty hilarious. Um, but my wife is a Minecraft addict. So she was mind-cracking out last night, and I wasn't able to use our our uh, laptop to do any capturing last night. The computer that I do all my editing on is, is upstairs in our studio and I didn't want to haul it all downstairs. But, you know, maybe next time I will. I might just haul it all downstairs next time because I don't want to miss out on any more crazy content like that. So I might try and unlock a couple more of these weapons and assignments just for the hell, out, hell of it. Just to kind of challenge myself, you know, get get out of the element, do some do some different play styles there. So I just unlocked the laser sight for the M417, and I got killed from behind right there, which was kind of irritating because I just had a nice three-shot kill on that guy, and then his boyfriend came up from behind me, and I spawned right there on a on a tank. I'm not even sure what all the names of these vehicles are. It's even crazy when I'm playing with my squad and they're calling out the exact names of all these different tanks and Amtrak things and I've, I have no idea. I, I feel kind of guilty sometimes because I don't know what what the names of all these different vehicles are. So I pretty much just sacrificed myself there. I saw that nade come in. I saw that nade being thrown at me. Um, but I just stood there, I wanted to arm that MCOM, sacrificed myself, I figured if I could get that MCOM armed, then they would have to be distracted for a little bit and come in and try to disarm that MCOM, and hopefully a teammate, um, would kill the enemies, and we did destroy that MCOM, so, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, oh, I, I take all the credit for getting that MCOM destroyed, but that's just another example there of how I'm just trying to help my team. I, I you know, like I said, I saw that nade come in, I, I could have easily tried to run away, and I might have even still died, but I just wanted to sacrifice myself and get that MCOM armed if I could. 
and I see the guy on the mini-map right here, but I don't see him actually, you know, on my screen. And so I'm just kind of getting out of there. I'm, I'm running along the outskirts. I'm trying to avoid any... I'm trying to avoid any infantry or any vehicles. And I'm also trying to climb up this ladder, which I was having a difficult time. So I'm trying to stay on the outskirts. I want to set up a spawn beacon back here to try and help my team uh, if they want to parachute in. And... I felt like I was getting shot out there, like I had a little suppressive fire. Oh, and there's the guy right there. And totally sloppy on my part. I, I totally panicked. I, I saw him, and I when I saw him, I thought that he saw me right away. But he hadn't. And so if I would have taken an extra second there... And then right there, I, when I went into the that little shed there, I swore that... I swore that I saw him camping there in the corner, but I looked right at him, and I didn't see the enemy name appear above his head, so I thought he was either dead or, like, just, uh, like I said, I hadn't played this map on Rush before, so, you know, I didn't know what was up with that. I was like, was that just, like, a, a block there? Is that debris? Um, is that a dead enemy? And then, oddly enough, that guy ran right past me, so I don't know if there was just some lag going on or, or what, but uh, pretty weird, right? And you see, I didn't want to make that mistake again. I was being a little bit more careful when I was running into the room that time. So we got this MCOM armed here, and I'm just kind of trying to hang back a little bit, and I am trying to get some hit markers on this guy from pretty far away, and... Looks like I was giving him some suppressive fire. Wasn't really hitting him because it looks like he changed his position because all my bullets were flying past him. So I decided to get the hell out of there too. And let's see here. Spot that guy. And got him. Some pretty decent shooting there. So we're moving up again here. We're actually doing pretty good uh, against these guys. I'm actually surprised when this when this game first started, the first set of MCOMs, I really felt like I was just getting my butt kicked and that we were going to have a really hard time and didn't stand a chance at all. And I'm in no way saying this game was easy. Notice how I don't take a shot at that guy right there. Pretty sure that that guy didn't see me. And I didn't want him to know that I was running on the outskirts in case I had decided to drop a spawn beacon there. I did not want to have myself appear on the mini-map. So I decided to not take any shots at that guy. So I want to get in a little bit closer before I put down an MCOM. And now we're getting pretty close to the base here. So since I am running a sniper slash battle rifle and I don't know where I am. I'm trying to take it pretty slow here. Breaking some of these chain link, chain link fences ahead of time. So if I do have to respawn, I can kind of re remember my path and make my way back in without having to break those uh, chain link fences again. Probably not a, a, bi a big deal either way. Now those are some sloppy shots on my part, I admit. I, I felt like I had the upper hand there on that guy. And I felt like if I would have just taken that extra second to adjust my aim, I could have killed that guy. And I'm trying to be very patient here and anticipate him because I really expected him to run around the corner and try to take me out. You can see here I'm being really, really cautious because I want to run around these outskirts. I want to come around behind everything here. And I turned back around to grab my tugs and throw a nade over the fence there. Now, I don't know if tossing a nade makes you appear on the minimap. I honestly don't know. But I figured I'd toss that nade if there was anyone on the other side of the wall screwing around with my teammates that I could either distract them or make them move. And meanwhile, I would run around. 
the outskirts and try to sneak in from behind. And there I set down my tugs. See a couple guys on the mini-map here. That guy's just standing there. And... I did get killed from behind, but I did get to take that Tony Montana guy's tags. Uh, which was pretty sweet because he killed me several times in this game. So a little payback there. And, yeah... They paid off, you know, I snuck up around behind him, took his tags. Like I said, though, it's not all about taking his tags and getting the top kills. And if I would have had it uh, to that great nade there, I think I pretty much threw that nade in my own face, which is totally professional. Most, most professional move ever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if I maybe would have had an automatic rifle, I maybe could have turned around and killed that other guy as well, but... You guys all know I love the M5K, and I just want to try some different guns out, you know? I want to rank some other guns up, and I want to challenge myself, too. So, took a dirty headshot on that guy. Pretty sloppy right there. And I know there's a guy on my tail, so... Now, right here, I tried to... I tried to pre-fire the 44, which was pretty stupid. I should have just stuck with the sniper. I, I really should have. I think I probably could have killed that guy. I got one hit on him with the 44. I was wigging out because he was just charging up, charging me. He actually got a really cheeseball kill on me with that repair tool. So got to give it up to him for that. I mean, I was I was all over the place. So I went 15 and 14. Nothing, nothing to write home about. But we ended up winning the game. And I like to think that I did help my team a little bit with some of those spawn beacons and some of the tugs and just trying to kill and distract some of the enemies while we armed the MCOMs. And that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this entry into my Battlefield Diary. Uh, please do check out our server if you're on Xbox Live. I will leave the name of the server here in the, at the end of the video. Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I'll catch you guys next time, alright? It's Other Jesus. Peace.